markets were, mm. especially if you're a mechanically orientated person. But at some point, as I say, you move out of kindergarten into college. Don't you think there's a fascination with them, though? Because I remember when I first saw, you know, first saw charts, and then I saw all these lines. Right. I was re- I was really fascinated by what are these things telling me, and if I find the right parameters or conditions here. I'm going to have some, I don't want to use the word mystical, but there was really something that I, I I wasn't quite sure what they were doing. And if I learned what they were doing for me, no one else would have that edge. And I knew I had to have an edge, and I thought they would give it to me. And um, But it didn't work out that way. But Well, I think you've identified it. I think the, the, one of the, you, you actually hit the nail on the head as my complaints about indicator, is the fact that people are seduced into thinking, if I can just find the right tweak, the right yes. parameter, I'm going to have a really simple way of making a lot of money in a very quick time, mm. and it doesn't exist. Right. You have okay. to understand the markets. Mm. Okay. Now, before we started recording today, I just want to make this clear. Um, I said I'd ask about indicators, but I didn't want to tell you what I thought about indicators, so can we just clear up that I, you, yeah, you don't know my stance on indicators? Well, it, it echoes, I guess, what you just said, and, okay. and, I, and I, I also didn't know what you were going to say about indicators, so um, I actually wanted your um, honest opinion on those, and I guess I echo that, that I just... I mean, I went through the search myself. I just didn't find anything that worked. But I'm also quick to say, if someone finds something that works for them, then that's fantastic. That's the position you want to be in, where you've got a methodology you can trust, and it works, and it's repeatable, and you know you can execute it. I just didn't find that myself. So, well, as I said earlier, I think that there is a place for them at the beginning. Right. I, in fact, Brian, Mark, Mark Douglas, the guy that put me on to this approach, he mm. said that irrespective of our personalities, we may be subjective, which have a set of rules, but we've got our intuition to play with. We've got fully mechanical, which we follow our rules no matter what. Yes. And the discretionary, who has no rules, subjective, who has no rules. So you've got a discretionary trade that has rules and intuition can play a part, or the subjective people, like the people on the floor or the people that are now scalping off the screens. Mm. They don't really have a set of rules, they just trade off feel, mm. if you will. And that's fine, whatever suits them. But my point Mark made was everybody should start with a mechanical system just to learn discipline. Oh, really? Okay. And in that, in that environment, I think indicators may play a part. Okay. Good uh, segue there with discipline, because that was going to be my next question. I, I mean, I uh, I always say it's probably the most important attribute successful traders have personality-wise is the ability to do what they have to do, whether they want to or not. Um, I've had a couple of clients come to me in the past, and they said, Stuart, I know everything I have to do. I have a plan. It follows the rules. I just can't follow the plan. I know discipline's important, but I just can't do it. I, I just can't follow the plan. Do you have any... I mean, if you had people say that to you, do you have any advice to people who... Just well, discipline's an issue? It, it, it depends on whether, as you know, I run a, a, well, I run a mentor class. Yes. Some students I can assist and some I can't. It depends on the nature of the problem. Some people have a lack of discipline through sheer habit. It, you know, it's a habit of not following through. <laughs> and that we can, we can create new habits. You, you substitute, you identify the belief system behind their lack of... Um, what pay what payoff there is for not following whatever it is they want not for not following through okay. and NLP teaches you a number of techniques that allow you to substitute positive beliefs for that negative belief and you slowly create new habits that's doable hmm. however there's a some people have a, a really deep problem and I think the best way of doing that is to tell a story I had a student call I won't mention name let's call him Stuart <laughs> okay and, thanks <laughs> uh, no matter what I did we had this major problem that Stuart could not trade leveraged instruments. Stock market, he was fantastic. Followed the rules. Made and this is sounding very much like me. Just make this clear that this isn't okay. me. Right? No, no, this is not you. This call is, him, I, I call him John or something. I'll call him, we'll call him Mike. <laughs> okay, Mike, okay. thank you. <laughs> this, is, this is a true story, so this is his real name. Okay, Mike, if you're out there, forgive me. <laughs> and Mike could trade stocks perfectly. He wanted to trade futures and we, we tried to, I tried to help him out. He did the, the mentor plan. And honestly, I was at wit's end. Nothing I did worked. It just would... I couldn't understand why he would follow discipline trading stocks, shift him into a leverage instrument and the world... He became the biggest cowboy in the world. Hmm. Uh, there was a guy called Dave Hunt that used to run some seminars for me in, in Sydney and she brought out uh, Ruth Baron Roosevelt, an NLP coach. And she did an exercise and Mike got brought into this exercise and basically this exercise regresses, causes regression, you go back to childhood or whatever. And in the process of that, the story came out. 
Mike's grandfather had lost the entire family fortune trading gold futures. So throughout his life, he was brought up with one. Trading futures is a sin, it's gambling. Mm -hmm. Honest people don't do it. And that's the, the, what I call fundamental belief that was running through Mike's head. And he was unconscious of that. And so Man. whenever he traded futures, and there's no way I was going to find Sabota it. Just, no, just he sabotage. was going to sabotage himself. Wow. And if you have that sort of problem, you need someone who's skilled enough to bring it out. Mm. And I, I, you know, you need a psychiatrist or a psychologist or someone very well versed in that area. Of the to world. go deep, deep, into, deep, the, deep into the mind. And, yeah. Bring out an unconscious fundamental belief paradigm. Isn't it amazing. It is. And you know, those I find would find very difficult. And he wasn't aware of that. He wasn't aware. He, he just broke down crying. He actually cried. At, at the seminar, it was such a emotionally draining event that you could, that he, he was, you know, you know, men, especially Aussie men sitting around a group and the guys yeah, crying. That's it's not healthy. Not very <laughs> uncomfortable. But it was, a, you know, and Michael from, from then on, I think, turned the corner. He, he, as far as I know, he was able to start trading the discipline that uh, he needed to do for futures. So yeah, that's, that's what, amazing. it's amazing. And as you'll see in the blog, I actually did 10, 10 years of therapy. And um, the stuff that comes out is just... Unbelievable! Hmm. I would recommend it to any trader. So, but, but the other the other thing um, was it's more habitual. It's more we get into habits, bad habits, and yeah. there's a reason yeah. why we do that because yeah. there's, there's a, a payoff pay for it. Yeah. So identifying that payoff and then maybe changing habits, which is possible. That's the the norm. Hmm. I mean, Mike's case is an exception. I hmm. mean, otherwise, we would, coaches wouldn't be able to have the rates of success that they do do with traders. Okay. Sure. The fact that they do hmm. means that the, the habitual thing is the issue. That that's a surface problem and can be changed with behavioural. Okay. A um, couple of things before we finish, if I may. Yeah. The world's going through a bit of a mess yeah. at the moment, and um, you know the global economic crisis. How has that affected your own personal trading? Like, what impact has that had? Um, 